Gross, uh, willkommen in einem and in our Fregens video. Welcome to another, another exciting video, in this case, episode 8 of my game design series of videos. In this video, I'll be providing a brief overview of Napoleonic's skirmish scale rules. While I originally created these videos to study game systems, it's become more of a rules review over the years. This revision of the video will focus on the rules review aspect rather than any game design aspects. Defining skirmish rules or Napoleonic skirmish rules can be rather problematic. Skirmish rules typically use a one figure, one element base scale and normally focus on larger scale figures such as 25 mil or greater, although many rules state 15 mil are suitable as well. But this is not a hard and fast rule. Flashman 14 does a good job grouping skirmish rules. Each time is defined by command level, typically company level or below. Number one, is the rule 6 to 12 figures per side or section level? These are basically closer to RPG than the others, encouraging you to name all the figures and adding character traits, example including songs of drums and shako forager. Number two, grouping, somewhere between 13 and 50 figures per side. Examples are Chosen Men, 95th, Green Jackets and Voltaires. And the third group, 50 to 100 figures. Examples are Sharp Practice and Chef de Battalion. In this video, I tend to class all rules which require a player to command something less than a battalion as skirmish, typically a company. This is mainly because there seems to be no squad scale classification to put the, the company scale rules into. For this video, I'll assume a skirmish set of rules is one where a player commands a maximum of a company and often far less. Green Jackets is designed around playing small scale skirmish actions in 25mm on a small tabletop. About 1050 figures per side is the usual size of a game. The rules are written primarily for the Peninsular War of 1807 to 1814. They are club rules or freeware. They contain typical skirmish components such as cards which control what a formation can do. Typically each player has one officer and possibly a hero which can have its own deck of cards. What can be done is based on turn on turn sorry, what can be done in a turn is based on action points which are required to perform actions such as observe, take cover, move, get up, limber, unlimber, fire, etc. The free rules look like very simple set of rules, with the rules only taking up a few pages. The image of the rules is shown here, although I'm uncertain if this is the official title of it. The scales I've assumed here for Sharp's practice are guesses on my part, so take them with a pinch of salt. In my investigation, these set of rules always get praised, and I have to assume these rules represent the state of the art in this possible gaming segment. Sharp practice are large-scale skirmish rules designed for between 30 and 120 figures aside, with players taking the role of heroic leaders of the Black Powder Age, Hornblower, Flashman, Sharp, Bolton can all lead their men into battle with much with much uh, heralded with this much heralded rule set. The rules are written with an emphasis on the Napoleonic Wars, but include rules that uh, will allow them to cover almost any conflict between 1750 and 1860. In the literary genre, a sharp practice sees the enlisted men operating groups of up to a dozen figures, with the key figure adding their character to the action. Groups of men may be combined into formations, and the rules contain a guide to using small unit Napoleonic drill in your games. The rules are suitable figures from 15 mil to 40 mil in size and work well with any basing system you desire. Chosen Men is a set of Napoleonic wargame rules for small and large skirmishes. I've had to make some guesses once again concerning scale, but at skirmish level this may not be that important. The blurb on the rules says as follows. Chosen Men is a set of fast action skirmish rules detailing the bloody skirmish between light troops and Napoleonic war. The primary focus of the game is on the soldiers and NCO in light flank companies as they scout ahead of larger forces and take part in man-to-man -man actions against enemy skirmishes. Although the game allows for the formation of accurately sized companies of light infantry and cavalry, if you wish, these formations are broken down into small groups of up to a dozen men. For the most part, officers are not swashbuggling superheroes, but staunch commanders who rally and direct their men to achieve the battlefield objectives. Although the game uses an alternate action turn sequence, officers can use their influence on multiple units at the same time in an effort to steal the initiative. With all the roles resolved using a standard six-sided dice, this game combines a classic wargame feel with modern wargame mechanics. 
we come across another set of rules called chosen men. I'm not quite sure if there's any relationship with the other one, but let's continue. Chosen men is another freeware set of skirmish rules. There, um, as I indicated, there are quite a few sets of rules with this name, so you need to make sure that uh, you get the correct one. This one's written by Richard Holgate. This set of rules use cards to regulate what can occur, with the three main phases being test morale, perform an action, and resolve a melee. These rules, like most skirmish rules, are very short, consisting of only five A4 pages. They look, for freeware, much more professional and complete than other freeware rules I have investigated, so these probably look like a good set of rules for people to consider. The King's Colour is a set of miniature rule wargame rules for fighting skirmish actions during the Napoleonic War, 1803-1815. Unlike most of the other rules I've covered, the force mix is rather large, getting up to a company if players wish. These rules were inspired by the literary exploits of heroes such as Richard Sharp and his chosen men. Unlike many other Napoleonic rules that are designed for fighting grand battles where commanders manoeuvre battalions and brigades, these rules focus on smaller engagements. These can range from small actions being fought as part of a larger battle or specific mission in which a smaller detachment is sent to capture a specific objective such as a bridge or crossroad or is ordered to defend a stronghold such as a farm, manor house or church. The rules have been designed for 28mm scale figures with each player commanding about 40 to 100 figures. Quick rules are another set of free rules. In this case I've made several guesses concerning scale, which tends to be a typical thing that I do for skirmish sets of rules. Each figure or infantry figure moves 6 inches in a turn with muskets firing up to 16 inches and rifles 30 inches. These rules do not involve cards and are all based on figures being able to shoot. If they do not shoot, they move, with some random element factors determining move order. They are extremely short, sharp and quick and possibly an interesting uh, experiment for new players to start because of its simplicity. When I started creating this video, I expected to probably find 6 to 12 set of rules, but I was surprised just how many rules there were out there. This is a list of other rules which fit into the scale, and it's by no means complete. Possibly in the future, I'll flesh this video out and increase uh, and include additional detail for some of these rules, but uh, not for this video. Card-based mechanics are common at this scale, especially for the more playable sets of rules. Rules are typically very short and easy to absorb. Skirmish scale rules are a bit unusual compared with most other scales, and I must admit not being a big player of this style of games, or scale of games. I remember many years ago playing a Wild West game, or figure game, where each player controlled a single figure, which I assume is kind of the roots of this style of gaming. It is a lot of fun, um, and it can be quite simple, but again, it's not typically my major area of interest, but it's certainly one which has exploded in interest in the gaming community lately. The reason why it's grown so dramatically is a little bit unknown, but I suspect skirmish rules scratch two main itches of the gaming community. The first is those players who wish to paint beautiful but large figures. And the other objective is to have a quick game with simple rules and a clear winner and loser that you can simply turn up at a club with no prior knowledge and get engaged in a game. The bling of beautiful figures and the ease of learning and playing a game is ideal for new players and gamers who just want a quick and easy game at a club. And so we come to an end of my episode 8 of my video on game system design, in this case providing an overview of Napoleonic skirmish figure gaming rules. Alle guten Dingen kommen zu einem Ende.